Wednesday guys, it's Yogini Kala and I, I feel like the light is so gray on me. It's a gray day and my phone, uh, if I put it to cloudy day, then everything turns like orangey red. So um, today I wanted to talk with you about, um, to introduce a topic that I will be leading you through. Let me just get my bag out of the way people. All right, and get comfortable. So I have to be sort of facing the light. All right, so what I'll be talking about in upcoming videos is sharing some um, self-care techniques that are based on shiatsu. You might have heard of the word acupressure. That is a word that uh, some Western folks gave to shiatsu. It's a type of massage, but it's uh, considered much more healing. It was part of the healing modalities in Asia. And it developed from traditional Chinese medicine, went to Japan, and then came to America and out to the rest of the world. Now it's based on, and what I want this intro video to, in, to let you know is, it's based on a principle that Western thought and <laughs> Western medicine has basically left out of its whole philosophy. And so for anyone who's spiritual, and even in like all religions talk about uh, spirit, this sort of sense of that there's something body, mind, and connecting, enlivening us, right? And so Western science came along and basically sort of took that out of it, made it a more mechanical, mechanically based. And so what I want to share with you, and I might end up just putting on my glasses for this because it's some small print, I'm just going to share with you a list of the names for this subtle energy, this life force from different cultures around the world, okay? Because this is a lead-in, like I said, to, um, I'll be showing you, I did one video on it before, on some acupressure points for stress, um, based on that. So I'm gonna be showing you more that has to do with the season, because our bodies shift on a subtle level as we accommodate the changing season. So it's going into fall here in North America, and so I'm gonna show you some self massage, acupressure massage for the fall season. But first I want to give you some of the concepts so you'll really get it and it's pretty exciting. Okay guys, so talking about this subtle energy, this life force, I'm going to read to you some of the names that some of them I didn't even know, um, some names for this life force. So you have a sense of how other societies in the world looked at um, the human body, mind, and spirit, okay, compared to how we, say, only in the last maybe 300 years look at humanity, just so you see how different it is. So some names, I'm just going to go through. Uh, Western occultism would call it animal magnetism. Ancient Egyptian, the Ankh. Western occultism, astral light. Uh, Chinese, Qi, as I will definitely, that's the word I will use when I show you some of the acupressure points and that I did in my previous video. Qi, so another word for life force. Hawaiian, Ia, I might be mispronouncing that, but it's E-A. Yoruba, Emi, Imi. Western occultism again, etheric substance. Japanese call it Ki. It's related to Qi, it's just their pronunciation, Ki in Japanese for life force. So, so far, all of these cultures recognize that there was a animating force that kept the body alive and connected spirit to the body, okay? So let's get some more. Um, Lakota, Lakota Sioux, Ni. Welsh, uh, the Druids, Nwifre. Again, I might not be pronouncing it right. Uh, the Kalahari Kung people. And the ones who do the click, which of course I'm not going to do, right? Uh, no, num, the Norse, the, the Ond, Iroquois, Iroquois, and I believe, I don't know if that's the name that the Native American Iroquois, that they use for themselves, but Iroquois, the Orenda. Uh, Reiki in psychology calls it the Orgone. Mongolian shamanism calls it the Ori. Gnosticism calls it Numa. Hindu yoga calls it Prana. Just call it yoga, but 
prana. Hebrew calls it ruach. Sufi mysticism, ru. Alchemy calls it the secret fire. Renaissance magic calls it spirit or spiritus. Uh, Rosicrucian vital life force. Thai shamanism, the winyan. Every culture, and of course there are many more um, tribes in Africa and South America that were not on this list, but they have a name for the life force. Okay, and I'm just going to read to you uh, this quote. There's a deep irony in the past four centuries of debate over the mind-body problem. The relationship between mind and body poses no problem at all outside of the modern industrial worldview, because anywhere people recognize the existence of the life force, its role in connecting mind and body is obvious. The relationship only became a problem in the Western world when materialist science threw out the connecting link. So, you know, now all of a sudden it's like, oh, meditation and all these things, and they're realizing that your thoughts, your feelings have an effect on your body. And literally that is viewed as, like, shocking. But as my friend who says common sense is not, uh, is not common, every other culture had an understanding that the mind and the body are connected. So it wouldn't be a surprise that, you know, whole, whole religions and shamanistic practices are predicated on the fact that the mind, body, spirit are all connected, and so they work on one to affect the other. Um, you know, that's how they would do healing. So this idea of separating us and treating it as, as, as if there's no spiritual force anywhere in the world is, is a late Western view, and it's now crumbling as they start to, you know, there is, what is it called, psycho-immunology, uh, where they're, no, you know, how the mind literally affects your immune system. And again, this is like, oh, wow, this is amazing. This knowledge existed in the West and in other parts of the world before. It was like it was stripped out, and now, after seeing some failures of understanding different illnesses, it's starting to come back again. So I will be talking about how to increase this chi, this energy flow that specifically in the coming out of the Orient that they have out of Asia, and nobody says the Orient anymore, but I, I don't know, I like that word. It's just mapped out these pa energy pathways in the body, and um, as it mentioned in yoga, they talk about prana, it's the same thing, that's coming out of Indian culture, and so coming out of China and Japan, the same, these lines um, of energy flow and um, so I'll be showing you specific just tapping and massage and what to do, points to do. Um, the first video you can look out for, we'll be working on the lung and large intestine meridians. And that is um, the meridians that come to the fore at the autumn season. And that just will help to keep us healthy because uh, the belief is that we are connected to nature, and so as nature shifts, right, you see the, the leaves changing color, though where I am they're not changing color as fast because the weather has been very unusual. The leaves are not turning. Um, it's very, very late. They're not getting beautiful golden oranges and reds because it's been very warm. But we are connected to nature, and its imbalance will show up in us, and so Part of what I'll be showing you is just working on these two meridians, the lung and large intestine, which have to do with the autumn season. So look forward to that, but I just wanted to start you thinking about an analogy that I gave that is, it's so obvious, it, it, you know, not to be morbid, but, you know, say you're with someone in the hospital and they're gravely ill and then they pass away. So five minutes later, that physical body is still there. If we were just muscle and bone, then there would be no difference, right? After death, the muscle and the bone are still exactly there. But that animating force is gone, right? Between when they were alive and still breathing and when there's the same body, but the li that life is gone. And so it's like that's, even though it's so obvious and, you know, Western society, of course, deals with death and life and trying to save lives, but it still doesn't, it's like, what is that that has now you know, so I was saying it to my massage students, if you then try to massage that body, it's like you can't bring it back to life because the, the, the life force itself is gone. Um, you can enhance it when the person's alive and you can shift it and change it and help with healing, 
But once that, that thing that we're all giving these names to, whether Hawaiian or African or South American or Native American, once that's gone, you're just left with a, a body. You're not, you know, it's no longer sort of a living being. So anyway, I just think that it's, it's important to get that basis. Um, I'll be talking to you based from the five element theory and it's a beautiful cycle and I know you guys have seen the yin yang symbol uh, the yin yang symbol is about this ever changing ever shifting energy and that things sort of grow they grow they grow and that there's always a little bit of the opposite in each like you know you've seen it in black and white and there's a little dot there's a black dot in the white and there's a white dot in the black so there's always a little bit of the opposite and then it reaches a fullness and then it turns again. So everything is in cycles. That can be comforting if you look at um, you know, society and the way the world is, just knowing that everything does come and go in cycles and that there is always movement and change. So um, in the next video, we'll just do our simple, easy practices for the lung and large intestine meridian. So see you soon. Oh, and at the time that I'm making this, click below, there might still be a tarot sale um, so if you see the link below the video, if you're interested in a very um, inexpensive uh, quick reading from me, click the link below if it's there. If it's not there, then I've already, um, you're watching this video sometime after I made it. Um, the sale is up for about another week or so. So don't be disappointed if <laughs> the link is not there. All right. Be well. Namaste. Bye-bye.